Oh, hello and welcome back, all you fine and wonderful ladies and gentlemen out there. Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. We got game number one of series number two here in Group D on the second day of the Dream League Season 13 Major. I'm joined by Draskal as well as Gary to watch a pretty exciting game for me, at least. North America versus South America, Evil Geniuses versus Pain Gaming. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm ready for the... Uh... <clears throat> ready for the series at hand um you know eg yesterday they looked uh they looked okay i mean obviously a lot of these teams we talked about at the beginning of the day um it's pretty much just a lot of scrims and pubs right now not really a whole lot of tournaments going on so a lot of a lot of the time teams kind of come into form you know around this time maybe a little bit after once people start figuring out you know what the good heroes are and if there's like a quote unquote correct way to play the meta mm. but um yeah i'm excited to see how it kind of evolves as uh, as dream league goes on so we'll see what the uh, eg and painter bringing respectively today yeah i think that uh that's going to be something that we'll see un evolve more and more often um throughout this tournament i think it happened a little bit at the minor but obviously still a lot to be uh digested and figured out the thing that i'll say about the navi lineup that i really liked uh, and we sort of touched on it briefly in the the game, um, as it is Navi that's moving on the upper bracket out of this group, at least one of the teams, was this idea of, like, we're going to group together as five, and then we're going to be able to control both outposts because you just can't do anything. Um, and to me, that just felt like it was two separate styles, and one style was, like, very clearly the correct way versus, like, playing the map and trying to just split push around the, other, the rest of the world. Um, well, getting... Um... Getting two outposts, I feel oftentimes is like if you lose both your side lanes, for example, right. it's much more likely that you're going to not be able to contest both outposts because um, you're gonna have to send a lot of heroes at just one. Uh, yeah. And then if you, if they also send their heroes at that one, and you don't have like adequate vision to scout like their movement, then yeah, you have a good chance of just losing them both. But uh, that was, I think, a, a byproduct of how Liquid were drafting and like. I don't know. I, I like thinking about that series. It's just weird to me how they could come up with a draft that played basically like from behind since, you know, minute 10 and just can't function from behind at the same time. It was, yeah. it was a little bit, uh, it was a little bit odd to me. So, dubious. Uh, like Puck banned out first phase. <laughs> Doom. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, I mean, again, I think it, I think it just goes back to the whole, the heroes that are good against Puck really just aren't picked. Like the the lion is probably the most uh, prevalent one to me, and even picking like Sand King, who on paper is pretty good against Puck because you do have that instant stun, it didn't really prove to be that effective no. against uh, Magical. I mean, sure he died like a handful of times in the first game, but it wasn't. I don't know. I, I wasn't convinced uh, by how it went down. So, gonna see the first pick here coming in from Pain. Uh, they've taken out the Ench on the Abba. And the, those two heroes in particular, like the, the Omni and the Abba, they play a very similar style. You know, they kind of just enable one of their core heroes. They occupy a set of space and they kind of, they force you to spend a lot of resources to deal with them. Remaining. You know, that's, that's, that's what they do best. Um, and, you know, Five EG, they really like enabling RTZ. Uh, depending on the game, sometimes if they see like a 21st or 22nd pick cheese, they'll, they'll pick like Meepo or something for Abed. So I think they're a team that can definitely abuse those types of heroes. So we'll see what the what plans that pain have in store here absolutely what they got i was really impressed yesterday uh with dunha's play um i think that mandy had a couple of really good games and then some that where they just got like bodied but no it's eg they're gonna take the io slark for themselves after pain take the lich one of the most picked heroes uh in this tournament so far um and i think that this was something that pain showed that they wanted to run we saw Liquid play it just earlier. Uh, I would imagine that Pain knew that this could be coming, and this is their answer to it in some Five ways. Seconds remaining. Yeah, I don't know if um, like Lich is nice, obviously, against the whole tether Dead thing. You throw the chain back. frost, you you gaze the That's IO. Okay. It's all very cool on paper. Um, Pain is going to just immediately react by picking up the Seeker, and they're going to ban on the Bat Rider, which is incredible against Lich and Bat, uh, excuse me, Bloodseeker both. So now we're looking at EG. We could see like the PL of the Naga ban. I think that's how uh, Liquid ran it when they did it in game one. Uh, they just took out like one of the illusion heroes. Okay. Uh, and I think it was PL, right? Because they had Naga that first game. Mm. 
10 seconds remaining. Yeah, that would yeah, be. Any, yeah, either way, I uh, I do like the Slark Io opening remaining. because I feel Slark is a hero who loves to play the map. Io just wants to be tethered to a core. And just the way that Slark can restrict your vision by just scouting out all the wards. And, you know, if, if you have any semblance of map control, it can snowball very fast on you against Slark because as soon as you're behind a little bit, all your wards die. And then it feels just very difficult to move around the map. And if for whatever reason you can't control one of the outposts, then that problem is is even bigger, right? And we kind of saw that reflected uh, against Team Liquid in the last series where they couldn't really control any points on the map. And it kind of, I don't know, it felt like impossible to play that game for them. But uh, Beastmaster ban, very interesting. Yeah, that is kind of a unique one. Um, I, I'm not sure what that is all about, except maybe just being worried about like ending the game and having a, an offlane hero that helps to support that uh i was watching a pub earlier today and i saw a really cool lane that i liked a lot um it was xxs playing bloodseeker and then they had uh febby playing disruptor um which to me felt super cool because you just lay down this this blood right on an area and then kinetic field the support and then they're just like stuck in there and it, it, it really emphasized to me like how strong this bloodseeker can be if there's just like a little bit of damage in one of the other lanes throw that blood right out you either force somebody away or you can maybe just kill them um yeah to watch for i mean going in line with what you're you're saying about the whole you want your other lanes to win on your bloodseeker that's kind of like bloodseeker 101 so right. beastmaster is a hero that has an okay-ish landing phase um if they put the io on the sark in the safe lane a beastmaster plus one could definitely like run down an io and just kill him if you get boar slowed it can it can be really uh problematic so I kind of see it in, lo in line with that sort of thinking. And like you mentioned, it is a hero that you can group up around. You get the inner beast story, you go for the book or, you know, the Vlad's Dom, whatever, whatever build you're feeling uh, for that particular game. And it looks like EG uh, watched the Navi series because they banned Enigma. They're like, <laughs> we don't want to play against this. Yeah. Yeah, they got demolished. That was a rough one. So Enigma banned out, the Rubik as well. And I think that that, you know, you, you see the Rubik ban, you're like, oh, may maybe they want to pick this hero that's really, really good uh, and gets owned by Rubik. Ten seconds yeah, no, it's, it's a good call for sure. Uh, mainly because Five Enigma needs a direct team. response, you know? Like, yeah, he needs a hero that's going to say, you don't get to play uh, the game by casting Black Hole. Mm -hmm. And if, if you don't want to do that, like, if you don't want to pick the, uh, like, the Clockworks or the Rubiks or the Silencers, then, you know, you kind of have to ban it. I like this answer too. You've got Lich that's there for physical defense with, you know, Frost Shield and then Bloodseeker who naturally amps up his damage, but also can take more when he gets Blood Raged. And so say, all right, we'll just get some burst, throw a tiny in there. Um, also fits amazingly with Io, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. The thing that's a little bit weird is like, I, I would, I guess this still could be a four tiny, but when I see tiny Io, I always assume core and it would be a little bit strange for me to have both the one and the two already shown at this stage of the game. It just really depends on, you know, what kind of function they, they need in their team. So right now, like Io is that type of hero who doesn't really make plays on his own. He just follows the core around. And then, you know, if you want a four position that's going to be active, the first thing that I think of when I when I think of an active support for EG is like uh crits or spirit. Like I think that hero um it requires a very skilled player and obviously it's it's one of crits, you know, comfort zone. So I, I wouldn't be like completely surprised if it ends up being like Abed Tiny, but it can still serve the purpose of being a four and just walking around being annoying. Lich is one of those like super squishy heroes where if you get tossed into a bad situation, you can end up just falling over. And uh, the Venomancer. Okay. I mean, it's it's really strong this game. You can't really walk into a Gale and Plague Wars as any of these heroes on the side of pain. Yeah. I, it's a I hero we haven't they... seen a ton of, though. What, what, what do you th you think? It's that's the main reason is that it's just hard to play into. Ten seconds, really. Yeah, it's 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 really hard. Like Plague Wars destroy Shaker. Like you can't you can't get your blank echo off. It's really annoying for you. Uh, Bloodseeker relies on high mobility. You get tagged by a Gale and a Poison Sting, and you're you're losing a lot of that kind of momentum when you go forward. And plus, you know, three melee, uh, you're gonna get hit by Poison Nova. It's just gonna happen. No. Even if you commit like all in to kill the Venomancer, you can assume that he's probably gonna at least get like one or two spells off as long as he's not like really far Ten behind. Seconds, and then uh you know you're just taking that residual damage as the fight kinda 
kind of goes out. Um, the one weakness for EG right now, I would say, is they do kind of lack stuns. They just have the tiny. Mm. They do have ways to cancel TP with the, the Slark Pounce because uh, the Leech Mechanic will cancel that. But, you know, besides uh, that, those two things, like, they, they really do not re have good lockdown. Like, they, they're relying specifically on, you know, you gale the hero, and then you hit them a lot, or you stun them with a the tiny, and, you know, you hit them with the Slark, and you try to get kills that way. But, yeah, I think, um, let's see. So they're, they're probably just going to either mid or safe lane the Seeker. I'm not sure how I feel about... I don't know if they want to go back for, like, another really farm-oriented hero, because the lack of catch can be abused. You can also do something like Storm. Ten seconds, mm -hmm. I think Storm is great for pain here, as long as he can have a lane. Because Isle will just Five die, uh, Venno will just die, yeah. and then you could also go the route of like a PL, which has pretty much zero counters in this game. Ooh. I don't know, there, there's options here for Pain. I, I think there is potential um, for them to pick something that is, is very hard to deal with just based on the, the lack of catch that EG currently have. But they do have overall 10th pick. pick. So that is, uh, that is a worry. We'll see what Pain's, uh, Pain's game plan is here. Yeah, I, I think uh, you still could maybe be a little bit worried about the Meepo, less so because you've got like Legion, you know, overall Minods is nice for it, and then Bloodseeker is like one of those. Oh, their team answers. deals with Meepo. Yeah. They definitely <laughs> can deal with Meepo. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, Wind Ranger. Another hero that is very good when the team doesn't have a lot of stun. Yeah, I, I think uh, this this EG lineup looks kind of weird though. I, like, do you do you okay safe lane Bloodseeker against Tiny Venno if they want to switch the Tiny to the four? Um, ten seconds remaining. I mean, I think Tiny can lane against pretty much any melee hero besides like Ursa, just right. because of how tree grab works. Uh, just gives you that extra range, allows you to just freely CS. You can aggro toggle and stuff. I think it would be okay even if it ended up being those lanes, but. Okay. Uh, all right, what's your Abed hero? You know, it's not a terrible invoker game. Quas Wex? Uh, either, honestly. I, I wouldn't hate Exord. I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't mind Quas Wex either. Just because, so when, when I look at games and I think, you know, what types of heroes are really good against Wind Ranger, obviously Tornado dispels the Wind Run, the Cold Snap Meteor, and like one stun or a pounce is just going to be the death of that hero. We'll see, though. Okay, they're going to go Storm. Select your heroes. Um... Yeah, Storm's good this game. I mean, there is the the Lich Gaze, which is probably the scariest disable. Right. Uh, Shackles, Duel, a couple of Earthshaker spells. They, ha they have Lockdown. So if he does get caught by a spell, then it's going to be a bit problematic. But if he's good with the Zips and he's got good awareness of like what spells have been used and stuff, it should be pretty playable, uh, in my opinion. Uh, the lane is not great right. for you because it's Wind Ranger and you can't really rely on things like Overload Harass and stuff to, uh, to really push your lane advantage but you should be able to farm i mean that's the thing to me that stands out about this too though is like you said that one misplay and suddenly there's a lot of uh potential follow-up to kill off the storm spirit uh so it feels like much more it's it's about like how quickly can he kill those heroes before they get the lockdown like if 444 gets caught out of position it feels like it's just a free pickoff for abed uh over and over and over again um but likewise yeah, if, for sure. if lich gets like a glimmer cape or something um then it seems like it might be a little bit tougher for Abed to play in the game. Well, no, we'll see. Uh, curious. Do, do you have a lineup that you sort of favor a little bit more in this one? You know, I have to kind of lean a little bit more towards pain just because I, okay. So I think that they have the potential to win the lanes really hard. Okay. So Ramses wants to dodge the Legion lane. He does not want to lane against that hero. Venno is just, super bad against legion and lane he, he she purges everything you do so if you get gailed you know it's the same thing as having an aphotic shield more or less where you're just able to remove both spells with one cast it's very value so i think if you're paying you really want to try to get that matchup and likewise if you're eg you want to try to avoid it your mid lane should do good because it's wind ranger versus storm so even though abed will still be getting some cs it's not like mandy's going to be pressured okay. you know it's it's a pretty free lane and no one's really going to rotate on you at all like, this Wind Ranger is going to be completely untouched, I would say, for the, the vast majority of the early game. Mm. And then once you have, like, these lanes kind of play out, and if the, the Wind Ranger is harassing well in the mid lane, that buffs up your Bloodseeker, and you get that that nice matchup against the Venno, hopefully. Um, 
yeah, things should things should be looking good, but we'll see. Doesn't look like right now like they really they care too much about putting King RD against that Venno, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see if they change it up once they scout out the lanes. Going to see an OBS dropped here bottom already from King RD. They might be anticipating the Slark walking top, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, possibility. Oh my goodness, we got some chat wheel spam. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we're we're in the Americas now, but. <laughs> <laughs> you know, besides OG, uh, I think, you know, the the Americas region is the most notable chat wheel spammers. Yeah, without, no matter which one you go to. I mean, I don't know. Is, is Southeast okay, Asia? Okay, old VP, old VP and, and C are pretty, pretty, yeah. uh, pretty hand with that stuff. Too. Let's be honest. We're all a little bit toxic when it comes to that. <laughs> Everybody's got their moment. <laughs> oh, I was playing a game the other day. Is, is the Legion Commander, and I cannot tell you how many times I spammed try harder. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's it's, some of them are just so good that they you really have are. to use them. You can't not. That's what I pay for Dota Plus for. Come on now. Well, speaking if you of, can't BM with without a hotkey, like what's the point? It's true. Why even play Dota? <laughs> so we've got the uh, matchup that you're talking about down there. Legion versus Slark Bottom. Uh, another one where, I don't know. Um, I think that like it's just so easy to win a lane as Io by just existing with a headdress, you know? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Th this hero is very, very strong. Um, yeah, they're, they're not moving too much. We'll see what, what happens after the Donnie runs. Oh. I guess they just don't care. I thought they would put more emphasis on... You know, making sure that the the Venno was against the Legion, but I guess not. Crit tosses away one to secure the bounty rune, so that is going to be four bounties for EG. What a way to start the game! Yeah, that's a that's a feels good right there. Jeez, a quad bounty. I mean, the level one of pain isn't really that strong. It's just a bunch of auto attacks, really. Yeah. But yeah, we'll uh. We'll see how the lanes play out. I'm sure the Bloodseeker will still be fine, even if it is against a Venno, because you are going to eventually put points into that Blood Rage, and if, you're, if your side lanes are doing well, uh, this Venno does have the potential to just kind of feed, because, you know, you get ran down and you're very slow yourself, so even with things like Gale, um, you might just uh, end up going down here, but we'll, we'll see what happens. They spotted this rotation from the Earth Spirit, so Abed should know that the Shaker is back there, and, well, he certainly does now. Uh, is he going to take a little bit of a punch to the back of the head? By virtue of that fissure and well, don't know we'll see where he ends up going but for now at least it's just going to be a solo king rd uh in this bottom lane yeah it's, it should be uh okay for him like the wave is close to his tower he's not really in any danger of dying it is an io support so it's not like a disable or a, a really big slow that you have to worry about it's just uh it, it doesn't mean that rt is going to be farming like that's that's basically what both teams want. They just want their safe liners to get some creeps. And uh, let's see, is there anything else? I mean, mid lane's going well for Mandy, but we kind of expected that. The Wind Ranger versus the Storm matchup is pretty favorable for the, the Wind Ranger until a little bit later on. Okay. A miss courier attempt here from uh, Dunha. He's uh, unable to find Abed's courier, which would have really hurt him too, because if he can't send out regen right now, if you look at his inventory, he's got nothing. Um, it would have been a disaster for him. So uh oh. With his die. Ramsey's on the wrong side of that fissure, though. You're crazing his play earlier, but now Duna feeding. He almost gets blocked off there by the wards and is just going to be forced to TP away. No other skills to break that one away, so it looks like he will escape. Uh, but not the greatest. Meanwhile, back here on the bottom lane, King RD trading hits with Fly, who's tethered up to the creep wave, but King RD will be able to pull this one past if he wants. Or just keep on trading hits. All taking some damage. Yeah, he's not going to go down here. Very hard to kill Legion. Super fast hero. Even being tethered to the creep wave. I guess he is slightly faster. He's just trying to be as annoying as he can. Uh, King RD is going to get the double wave here. And it's just about the EXP, really. Meanwhile, back up top again. They're not in the position to block off there with the fissure, but doesn't quite get it. And 444 is still nearby, but not quite there with the movement speed. A little bit faster. This is going to make Bloodseeker move around mighty quickly. 
And eventually they move into position. Power shot, nice. drawn first blood. Yeah, very nicely done there from Mandy. Nice little boost of economy for the mid player. If I'm on bed right now, I'm like, man, couldn't you have just died to someone else? Dude, Arteezy. The hell? <laughs> what happened to bottom lane? Um... The uh, nomadic slark. He's just trying to stop the, the Legion from getting the the uncontested waves, I guess. And then he's giving solo EXP to the, the IO, which honestly isn't that bad. Because, you know, he's got creeps here. And then the IO has creeps pop. It's a little unconventional, but, you know, he'll take it. Yeah, it works. He gets his creep wave back. And there's going to be a second one under the tower here. We'll see if Fly tanks this wave to make sure it doesn't go underneath the tower. Uh, but this is going to be a huge wave. See, this is three range creeps and then also another one up top. He's going to pull it over to the hard camp, which means Fly just has to keep on uh, eating up his own. Weird, weird start to that. It's really efficient, though, what he's doing because he's allowing his support to get solo laning XP, which under normal circumstances for a five would never happen. Yeah. He's using it to kill a neutral camp, which normally at level three you wouldn't be able to do. And he's also just going to be able to, like, bully out King RD. That kind of baits him in. Oof. Hits off. He's got the ooze, but yeah, too tanky to dive here. That doesn't mean he'll miss out a couple here, but that's perfectly fine. And I mean, it is less creeps farmed for him than HFN at this point in time in the game. Uh, he's up 30 and 10 versus the 19 and 7. And well, now maybe going to be able to find another kill. They toss him back on the other side of the fissure. Ramsey's eventually is going to hit the deck. I guess a lot of those are probably plague wards as well. Yeah, the uh, the play words aren't too tanky right now. Let's see, what's his skill build? Okay, so he's opted out of Gale. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, all right, bounty runes. Looks like three for one for pain. They might also lose. Okay, nice toss. Chris gonna be fine. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like um, like Gale in this lane in particular, it, it's not gonna kill anyone, right? And maybe they just want Ramses to be able to occupy this lane or like eventually rotate mid if they feel like Pain are going to be pushing it to just hold the tower. But not even having a value point in the Gale at this point does mean you are very, very easy to kill. Yeah. Quick rotations can happen. And I mean, the fact that Legion's been able to, yes, sort of be zoned out every now and then uh, is bad, but that also means that Earthshaker can be the one moving around and making this stuff happen. Um, and it's interesting because this has been kind of the pain motif, right? You you secure that safe lane sometimes with the tri lane and level six on Abed uses a lot of his mana pool. Mandy thinking about chasing, but Earthshaker on the other side means that they can't go for the full committal. Uh, unlucky that they were in spawn bottom there. If they got the haste, they might have been able to make a play, but unfortunately it's spawn bot, so not favored for EG. Top lane, HFN again, on to Ramsey's tail. You mentioned it, no points in Gale. They fear him, they pull him back in, able to interrupt that one, 444 in some trouble, but so too is the rest of EG. Maybe it's just HFN that's in trouble now. Fissure to secure his retreat. With the IO and tiny rotation, it actually ends up working out good for them. Yeah, nice movement, scouting it out. They had the, uh, the ward on the hill. So they kind of knew what they were getting themselves into. And likewise, Payne also had a word. So I'm surprised that, you know, 444 ends up putting himself in uh, that dangerous situation. Okay, crit. Wow, that stun canceling the Sinister Gaze. Ooh. Might have saved him. Power shot comes right, through not. HFN. They got the heals coming from Fly, and that's enough to stop it. And the weird fissure block off means that they stack the camp because of it. Uh, and we'll see if they can clear through that one now. I'll get the D ward on that OBS placed down. And in the meantime, now Ramsey's having that third point up in the Plague Wards. Uh, makes it a lot easier for him to hold this lane. And HFN is going to have a tough time dealing with these wards. He does get a lot of the stick charges, though. As long as... If he has Vision or Ramsey's, which he will with the ward, he's going to be getting the, uh, the magic stick charges, which means he'll have a lot if they do decide to try to dive in here. They are bringing a lot of heroes on AG, man. They want the, at the very least, they want the tower. This is a heavy commitment, but if they can get it, it looks really, really nice. The frost shield there, trying to keep it alive as long as possible. They don't have a glyph, and so it will go down. No chance for a deny either. Pain, maybe trying to take this fight after the fact, as they are in fairly deep. Abed there, 
Trying to battle this. They're underneath the ward. Have to be careful. Power shot comes through. Fissure going to connect. Do they have a shackle to land? They pull him back in with the Sinister Gaze. Seeing if they can kill off Abed, but he is going to be able to make the escape for now. Power shot connects. Not quite enough damage as a regen rune right off to the side where he's going to be able to pick this up. And that is a big win if he can get out of there in time. They still have vision over him. Power shot almost going to connect, but it was just on the edge. So Abed escapes. Regeneration. That regen just like, it helps him so much because he doesn't have to make a base trip. Otherwise, he'd be walking around and now he's get, he's going to, oh, nice oh. thing actually. I was going to say he might get to, to farm the jungle for a little while with the regen, but Mandy paying attention. Was that? This night. That wasn't blind, was it? Because he didn't have the thirst vision on him anymore, and they pinged the top like they... Well, he he popped it when he was under the tier one, and okay. they did lose the thirst vision, but it's like, that's the most obvious camp that he's going to be walking to because it's the closest proximity camp, and they do have a ward on the high ground as well uh, in the jungle. So there's a chance that that one saw him when he, like, pathed to the medium camp. It would have been real close, uh -huh. and then he can just shoot it. That makes sense. But we'll see if they get that... D ward or not, considering they're pinging up on the high ground as if they thought it was there. Um, the rotation down bottom now. They do have level 6 on King RD. Arteezy is level 8. Sitting with his trusty shovel and gets the value bounty rune, but he calls that Wind Ranger is missing and says, yeah, they're probably down here trying to try and kill me. Um, as they are smoked. Let's see if they can Radiant's find him or not. Tower is under attack. Well, well Mandy's finally got a point in the shackle now. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, he didn't skill until eight. It's not that weird. Nice. Crit steals the bounty. Might be dead to this one. That's a lot of damage. Javelin comes out very quick. And they find that kill. So, so far, a little bit of a lead right now for EG. About a thousand gold. Um, but... I think the big thing to me is that Abed's kind of gotten away from the laning phase pretty scot-free. Um, and he's behind the Windranger, but it's not a crazy amount, that feels like. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, he was getting kind of owned on the first few ways, but as we mentioned, that's kind of just how the lane goes. Storm, a lot of the time, wants to use his, his remnant to push the lane, and with the overload hits, you just harass the enemy mid. But against Windranger... You're never really going to get more than one hit at a time because he's just going to pop wind run and just hit you back. Mm -hmm. So you can't play aggressive like you normally would. And if you just walk up to the wave, you're going to get hit and then you're going to get power shot. And it's never really that nice of a trade for you. So you just wait. You bide your time. You know, you put points into your your overload and your remnant. And then once you have enough mana regen, like through bottle and clarities and stuff, you just do what he's doing now, which is just push the lane, farm the jungle, push the lane, farm the jungle. It's like, you know, wax on, wax off. That's basically <laughs> how Storm is played in every matchup. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that, but it, Crit just made a walk through the jungle and was standing there absorbing Ramses. all the creeps the entire time. And they're going to be able to get a dual win from that one. So Mandy Rotation finds the kill. Uh, they got a Royal Jelly. Looks like Wind Ranger got one of the charges of it. Um, I'm not sure who got the other. Uh, Bloodseeker. But it is going to be a rupture used now onto crit abed jumps into the middle of all of them but they get the enchant totem stun off as the relocate moved in hfn super low another round of punches but they are not quite in range but they will finally bring him down so they lose veno and tiny in two separate lanes but managed to get the return kill on the bloodseeker this is about to get really scary for pain because this slark's gonna have the fusel soon and that relocate is going to become a lot more dangerous instead of being able to potentially walk away you know hfn almost made it out of there Next time, it's just going to be a purge uh, into death, basically, for, for any hero. So the Slark is going to be a problem. They need the Blink Dagger up on King RD if they really want a you know stable way of dealing with him in the storm. And they're going to have to make it count, man. Like, as soon as this, this hero gets that item, they have to make some plays. They are smoked up bottom. Uh, the only hero they're going to find, though, is the Veno. It's not, like, the most value kill. But they should be able to play him here, as long as there's not like a mass TP reaction from EG. One well, mentioned relocate just being used, still 20 seconds away. They have a mech on that IO if they can get there, but looks like Ramsey's likely gonna go down. Does not have his ultimate skill, but they managed to find that kill. And now Mandy 
down low is going to die. Abed low on mana. They turn to fight. King RD is going to just drop Abed, squaring up against them. Do they find a kill? Needs another bounce. Lucky gets it. And they find that kill. But holy hell, Abed, he hit hard. Yeah, that, that DD rune was the only reason they were able to do that. In the meantime, they lose Yuha in uh, top lane as well. So the Shaker ends up going down. Really nice play from the Storm. He even spent his gold right before he died. So that the economic loss there for the death at the end was like nothing. Yeah. He, he doesn't really care that he ended up trading his life because they keep the tier one pretty much at full HP and now Ramsey's just going to TP right back and we talked about how a lot of people play this hero he just sits there and he occupies a lane mm -hmm. he puts a bunch of plague words down he makes you commit to him really hard to kill him and then your team reacts you know or, or pushes another lane whichever and then you, you end up being okay with it and because he has bots you know he can relocate to wherever he needs to be and I'm surprised he didn't bring a sentry down here because uh, when a team dives you like that, it's oftentimes that you would see a sentry immediately drop behind the tower because they want to see reaction. You know, mm -hmm. they want to see if there's going to be mass TPs and stuff. Yeah. No, it's true. Um, they need to be careful this time, though, if they do want to dive the Venno because they will have relocate available. Io has that mechanism still. So Ramsey's just going to be able to sit here. And meanwhile, EG take a much more valuable tower, and they're actually taking it. So it looks like the call from Pain is instead, let's collapse on a mid, see if they can find a kill themselves. But EG wisely going to back out. Crit is sticking around this area. This is rather bold from him. I, I don't know about that one. I was doing Well, I mean, he just wanted to, you know, he wanted this uh, secure creeps, you know, force a reaction. Okay. Make sure that the tower stays dead, I guess. I don't know. I think it's one of those things where you kind of expect that you might die there. But if they kill you and they're walking to their mid lane where the tier one, you know, isn't even really dependable, then you end up in a situation where your Venno is just able to set up more wards bottom. Like he's holding this tier one in the safe lane. And uh, I don't know. It doesn't, like, honestly, that death to me doesn't feel that bad because I know nothing else is happening on the map. Okay. If, if I die and then I lose a T1 or I die and then my team dies, then it feels a lot worse. But it's just a tiny kill. Like, mm -hmm. he probably lost no gold for that. Well, they did manage to at least get some more dual victory. But yeah, it's it's not the, the biggest thing in the world for sure. Um, down bottom now, crit is set up with Ramses. This is like just the pain lane, right? Like... <laughs> You just get in here at all, and you're going to take so much damage from these heroes. Um, and yeah, this battle is doing a lot of work, actually. Like, you look at it, and you say, okay, well, you know, he's one in three. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, his only job this game is to, like, exist, to to keep them from taking map control away too quickly. Because mm -hmm. one of the ways that Pain really excels is that, you know, you take the tier ones, you got these blink initiators, like the Legion has the blink dagger, and then... You know, when Ranger after BKB, I assume, is going to get blank. And then you take fights and, like, force these really, like, weird engagements and chaotic engagements that their heroes are great at. Um, but when the Tier 1s are up, like, all of them are up, then all of a sudden making those moves, it's a lot easier for EG to react. You're no longer isolating a hero and killing it. Now you're potentially fighting against three, four, or five members of EG on top of a reload. Mm -hmm. So it's not a freebie anymore. In the jungle, it's now fighting under a tier one where we're potentially going to have like a four hero reaction within three seconds. This is what's That's crazy. Like, you, you saw also these boots of travel builds. So he goes mid, drops down a couple wards, keeps the lane pushed out, and then he can come right back and do the same thing. And for the past like four minutes, Pain have just been sitting three heroes bottom looking for an opening. And there's no opening. And the entire time, Slark has complete free farm in the jungle with Fly amping up his attack speed and making sure that it's going that much faster. Um, just no opening right now for Pain to get in. Yeah, this is exactly the type of game that EG want to be playing. They're making Pain like sit bottom. Honestly, if I were them, I would just smoke to my own jungle at this point. Like, yeah. Just walk into a location on the map where you can actually claim oh something. King RD up top. Nobody's TP. Nobody's trying to help him. He just steals that 10 essence shift and then runs away. Attack. And they force a rotation. So now there's really nothing that can happen down bottom. They force Dunha to just be up here, and he's still a thousand gold away from his blink dagger, roughly. And now they're able to pressure the tier one tower bottom and take that one instead. At least get some damage on it. Yeah, I um, I don't know. I, I 
it feels very hard for Payne to take an engagement. It has to be like a very quick movement, like a, a smoke. You know, you you go to a certain point on the map and then you try to get a pick. Like you're probably only going to be able to kill Fly, but you know, forcing uh, oh, the no. Sark on your side of the map is okay. It's just that Megan did. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know, and that's that's something that we just haven't seen from Payne yet. But it's it's really bizarre because it feels like they're all of their moves are being countered before they're even thinking about making them. And now Crit just chasing them around. They're underneath some vision. Abed jumps in with Storm. They find that initiation onto King RD, and it is easy peasy, or it's easy as they come in and collect himself another essence shift permanent. Like watching how this game is playing out, this is kind of why I wanted Pain to play Storm. Yeah. Because at least then it gives you reach, you know. Without Vision, obviously it's very hard no matter what. Is Mandy's gonna go on? Oh the random God, player. no! They pull him back in. He's got Guild. He's got Veno ultied. I, I don't know, man. It, it's it's really really bad for Pain. Oh, top, Earthshaker. Okay, they're gonna TP this time. It's just a scare TP. It's gonna be enough to force the Arteezy Slark back. Oh god. And it just keeps on coming. I, I, after the move doesn't end up working, now they find another kill onto the Lich. And Pain just looked lost. I think EG's overall idea about the game is just really solid. Yeah. Like, they pick these these heroes that play together all the time. Like the IO and the, the Slark. As we say, that Fly's actually kind of chill in bot room, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the general idea is you have your core play the side of the map that is closer to the objective, and then you have your three position occupy the lane that no one wants to be in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's the, the four or the five hero that does that. But this game, it's, you know, it's Ramsey's. And his only job is to do what he's doing right now. Like, he, look at these heroes. They can't walk in. You know, these blink carriers that really want to just blink in, get that initiation, and just get a quick kill and run away are really bad against Venno. Especially when you're as thorough about the, the Plague Ward placement as he's been. You know, he's, he's not putting them on top of each other. If you look at the spread, he sees every single angle that Pain can possibly go in at. Yeah. So when the smoke breaks during daytime, you will be able to see them as long as you have the wards in the right spot. And if you can see them before they get in, then they're not getting in without losing heroes. And that's that's the main issue that Pain are currently suffering from right now. And you can see that smoke. They don't find anybody at all. Venno is just going to be able to hide off in these trees, build up another wall of Plague Wards, and he's fine. Right now, Ramsey's MVP by pressing E. That's what he's doing for him. Yeah. And now they're moving in, and it looks like they want to try and take Roche because they know, all right, Pain is committing super hard for this bottom tier one tower, and nobody is up here near Roche to try and defend against this. So EG, help maneuvering Pain. I mean, no matter what happens in this game, whether or not Pain are able to, uh, you know, make a comeback happen or not, I think that they might just ban out Venno because of the pure frustration. Like, this is like, so demoralizing to play against. I just think that Wind Ranger, like, I think it just should have been Storm. Like, yeah. like, I keep looking at it, and I'm like, you were playing against no stuns, right? Yeah. And you need a hero that can really just go. And Storm is, is one of those heroes. And during the late game, you know, good luck killing a storm with EG's heroes. Yeah. I mean, obviously they wouldn't have had a storm themselves, and they would have been able to, you know, pick another hero instead. But they just needed that that guy that was okay to just YOLO. And Wind Ranger can't really YOLO this game because if you do get tagged by the Gale, and the, the storm jumps in with the pull, we saw what happens. You know. Oh, maybe a chance, maybe a way. Avalanche toss though to interrupt, looking for anything at all. Abed super low actually. He is maybe in some trouble. HFN trying to bring down Crit, but Abed's still just standing there. They do finally burn through that. That's the Aegis. Now taking down Fly before the relocate. They take him down, kill him off. HFN trying to run, but Abed has him in the sights. And they find that kill as well. Abed takes down 444. They manage to find a shackle to interrupt. And finally, with these BKBs, Pain able to make something happen, but it comes at a cost. They end up losing that fight. Maybe an Invis room King RD could find somebody on the back line. Doesn't look like it's quite going to happen, though. Yeah, if they didn't have the Aegis there, Pain actually win that. But I, again, that's you know that's the only reason EG even tried to take the engagement in the first place. Right. They just bait it out because they know that Abed's got two lives, and Storm is pretty much still hands down the best Aegis carrier in the entire game. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, it could have been worse for Pain. Yeah. 
that that wasn't like the the absolute worst case scenario. They didn't even lose their tier two. It's only like sixty percent HP. It's not that bad. Um, the other thing is that since Pain had been playing in such a you know clumped up manner, trying to go for these tier ones, which by the way, it's twenty three minutes in and they had yet to play in a single tier one tower. Mm. This Bloodseeker that you pick against the the Slark in the opening phase has not really shown to be much of a deterrent for anything that you know artiz has been doing in the game. And he's yeah. even going for the SNY Satanic build, realizing that, you know, BKB doesn't really do much, but if you're only dying to things like Rupture, you know, getting Shackled or getting Dueled, then Mass Status Resistance is the way to go. And plus oh. having a life steal on top of that. Yeah. It'll be, uh, it's a really good build this game. Well, EG doing a fabulous job of playing the map here and making sure that they can pull them back and forth uh, across of it. It looks like Payne are going to try and reclaim some of their jungle now as they head off into this area as four. Um, the EG ward up here on the top lane is finally going to expire as well. But these ones are freshly planted. I'd be surprised if they lasted all that long. It's one of the spots that you would normally check as Payne. Uh, one thing to watch out for, though, also, we've got an Agnum Scepter about to be completed for Abed. And that one is... More than a little bit spooky. Also, the Grove Boat, man. What a good collection of neutrals that Storm has. Yeah, the, the Clumsy Net, you know, it seems a little bit counterintuitive at first because it does actually net you as well. But it's stats and mana regen. And as a Storm player, you see that and you're just like salivating. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Give me the mana regen and the stats. Yeah. Middle Tower is under attack. And Ramsey's just on his perch. He's hanging out. They find the uh, King RD Legion off to the side, relocating in. You thought you were safe at your outpost, but there is no safety, King RD. Arteezy shows up, beats in to the blade mail. And three heroes rotate for that. They're not going to be able to make it work. It does look like they'll be able to maybe bait out this bounty rune. I mean, with no relocate, there's a chance here. I think it's just going to be the same thing that happened last time. They're going to like sit around the tier one, maybe think about going in. Okay, they're going to echo Abed. Jump, drop everything. Can they kill him off in time? The fear, but Abed just jumps away and crit. He is not even going to die. They turn on to 444, find that kill. Now going to be able to go for the second round. The leash comes out. They get him caught and going to be able to get him killed. Rupture now onto Abed. He is still dropping somewhat low, gets the zip away, but it wasn't quite in time as they managed to find that kill, but they'll lose HFN for it. So they do finally bring down Storm, but it comes at a cost. I mean, that was the, the only thing he could do in that situation. Yeah. It's like, you either do that or you just BKB TP. He just went for the gold, you know? Can't blame him. Yeah, I don't know, man. It, like, this is the, the way that I think about most Dota games, but when it feels easy for one team, that usually just says to me that their draft is better. Oh no, oh no, Mandy. Mandy. The pounce comes out, they got him, Lee Shackle. Oh, it's a dream, he wants to take down Io if at all possible. They finally kill Ramsey's on the other side of the map, but Mandy is not gonna be able to escape from the big bad Slark who's laying into him. They try and kill off Fly. Mandy not gonna be able to make him die. And well, Arteezy is just going to walk away from the base, reclaim the kill, got murder done. This one's rough. This is a, a beatdown. Yeah. This Veno, like you mentioned earlier, is just doing work. It doesn't matter if Ramsey dies like 10 times, 20 times, whatever. It's what he accomplished in this game by keeping their towers alive is why EG seemed to be in such a dominant position. Dyer's middle tower. Yeah, he definitely... There's just nowhere for them to make plays, you know? All right, you guys want to see a short duel? <laughs> they jump in onto him. Happen. And it like it's over. <laughs> The silence comes out. He's going to be back up to full again. They get the relocate out because they thought there might have been worry. HFN pops the BKB, turns on to Crit, who is just standing there. Literally standing there. Avalanche toss. He ends up finding the kill in his death. Oh, man. Crit took him down from beyond the grave, and now they find themselves another round. A good shackle. But again, it does not last that long. It will mean that Mandy escapes, but he had to pop the BKB for it. Although, does he actually escape? All right, Arteezy, what are you doing, man? He's just going in. He doesn't care. Asserting dominance, killing off the creep wave, and going to go back for the towers afterwards. Yeah, his uh, his itemization in this game has been on point. And it was kind of a free game for him. 
Like, honestly, I'm surprised that Payne spent as much time bottom as they did this game. With considering, like, how much they didn't want to die in the tier one. Like, they just stood in trees for, like, <laughs> seven minutes. Like, that's yeah. a quarter of the game. I they know. just stood in trees. Like, just go back to your jungle, make them leave, oh, and, no. like, try to push somewhere else. I mean, this game's just over. This if one's not, super done. Uh, the chain cross bounces. Wow, 444 four, trying to run. Mandy, see if you can kill off Abed. Abed gets the relocate out at the last second. The well played comes through. Be careful. The courier's dead. They DC. They're done. They're over it. GG is called. Oh, EG looking good in game number one. My goodness, Draskal. That They just didn't have an answer for the Venno. Yeah, the Venno, like, it, it did so much this game. It's easy to look at these types of lineups and be like, wow, Ortiz is really far. Wow, Abed's, you know, <laughs> popping off. But the Venno, if they didn't have that hero, there would have been a lot more, like, tower pushes that would have been difficult to stop. They might have been forced into bad engagements, but... They, they didn't lose any tier ones because Ramses just went for the, the 044. He just dropped plague words everywhere, broke multiple smokes, and his sacrifices were, you know, to the, the benefit of Abed and Arteezy. They, they just got everything they wanted on those two heroes. And, you know, King RD's Blink Dagger, did he get a single duel win after Blink? I think he got like one, right? Um, he had 30 damage before. No. So, yeah, no, that's it. That, that, was, that was the one. Yeah, I uh, I don't know. I, I thought that, you know, Pain, they could have actually snowballed their lanes a bit better. And honestly, I feel like they hesitated a bit too much. Obviously, hindsight's twenty twenty, but right. No. Sometimes when you can't like directly force an engagement under a tower, you need to try to move somewhere else to make something happen. Because even just you know forcing or killing the IO a few times gives dual damage to your legion. You know, you're you're at least progressing your items. You're still getting farm. But the way that they played it, they didn't get kills really. And then every time they, I think they committed for the bottom tower twice, and both times it backfired. Yeah. So it's either you got to play it differently, you got to pick some other mid hero besides the Wind Ranger instead. Maybe you know, like I mentioned, I thought what Storm would have been great for them this game because they did have the pick before. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens in game number two. This game though, EG definitely had their number. They had every single answer for questions that weren't even being asked by Pain Gaming. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with game number two. Pain Gaming have looked a lot better than this in the previous games that we saw. We'll see if they can get back to form or if EG keep on posing two cuff of questions. See you guys in a few for game number two.